systems are a no. Hello, I am Matt Dragon from Channel Bedreas, and I'm going to be doing a little challenge here in Automation, the car company tycoon game. I'm going to be creating a very specific car for a very specific time of space. It is a GT car and from 1964. The reason for this has <laughs> a little bit of explanation required. Lately, I've been having a uh, bit of a fixation on the Studebaker GT Hawk. I've actually created this car in automation and I've been doing a lot of tweaks with it and to be honest it's still a work in progress but I noticed that it ended up becoming a GT car according to automations which I found interesting so from that I decided to recreate another GT car in the same that had the same body style and that car was the 1964 Aston Martin DB5. And in an interesting twist, the DB5 having an i6 engine as more powerful than a V8. And you know the picture here of the DB5 I have created. With these cars created, I decided to create my own GT, a grand touring vehicle. So let's jump here into the sandbox and see if I can create something to compete against the Studebaker GT Hawk or the Aston Martin DB5. And since I've set the time back in 1964, let's jump back in time. Now the car style that I've used for both the Studebaker and the DB5 is this one here. So it's a 103 inch wheelbase. So we're going to be creating a coupe that has a similar wheelbase. I think I might use something slightly different than that. That's 103. May potentially want to try maybe using this. The uh, styling from the Corvette possibility. Or do we want something a little bit more, more of a classic style? Hmm. We want something comfortable but fast looking. We don't want to go too back far in time. I'm kind of thinking maybe something along the lines like this, possibly. There's a three inch difference between this and this, but that. You know, I think you might be able to get away with this because I'm. Thinking for the engine, we're going to have to go with something different other than a V8 and an I6. So we're going to go with the steel. I think we'll go with the monocoque. Because uh, the game automatically loves this chassis for GT. Steel. Do a front longitudinal. I think we'll do double wishbones in the front. For the rear, you might just do double wishbones all around. There we go. Now, you already have an inline six. You already have a V8. I don't want to use boxer engines. I mean, they you can get a lot of power out of those, but they don't really inspire sort of a classic sort of GT style. So I don't know about that. I don't want an inline four or an inline three. I don't want to copy the V8, so it might just go maybe a little, maybe a little bonkers here. And go with the V12. All right, so we're going to actually make this a little bit smaller. Kind of want it to be just a little under square, slightly. Let's see, that might do the trick. 5 liter V12. The Studebaker has a push rod and the. What's it? The Aston Martin has a dual overhead cam, so I want to be a bit of a contrarian. So I'm going to be a direct acting overhead cam. Okay, that's interesting. And cast all around. 
It's going to be a big, heavy engine. The forged, forged cast. I'm going to whack the quality up a little bit. Because those piston heads are going to wear out pretty quick. Compression. Probably will be looking around 10. Cam is going to be pretty high. Go with direct injection, but no. That's... <laughs> that's something special. Uh, I guess that's the problem with this sort of style of engine, since it's so... such a tough, uh, high angle that the aspiration part of the engine is such... it's like a tower sticking out of the top. Hmm. Mine go... with a two-barrel, six-carburetor. <laughs> Is that a little too crazy, maybe? Might be a little too crazy. Maybe a three three carbs. There we go. That might do the trick. And do it with a standard. Get a little bit of a lower profile. Super leaded, of course. Hmm. Yeah, we might use cast. Dual exhausts. Alright, so what's going on here? We're knocking. So the octane level is too high. Back the fuel mixture up a little bit. It almost gets it. <laughs> and it just crashes because it's too full. Alright, so we'll whack it up a little bit. Or the ignition timing, maybe? Can't. We're not going to get too much out of that. Ooh, almost 300 horsepower. Nice. That's kind of what... That was sort of the goal I had going on in my head. Very nice. Very nice. Let's see here. Maybe we can squeeze out a little bit more. 300 horsepower. Cool. All right. I'm pleased with myself with that. That's a pretty smooth cur curve there. Yeah, this sounds. Hmm. That is not the sound I was expecting from this engine. <laughs> That's a crazy sound. Hmm. Maybe we might use a different sort of aspiration system. A different valve system, I mean. I guess that's just what V12 sound like. Alright. That's the case. It's gonna be an interesting sounding vehicle. Oi, oi, oi. High revving, that's at least a little higher revving than the other cars I've created. There's the sedan. We are not looking for a sedan, we are looking for the coupe. And we have to do something to this to make it look a little bit more sporty. Well, it definitely fits the engine, I'm sure, but no, it's just this is just not going to work. Okay. Said I don't want to just duplicate what I've been making so far, because that would just not wasting time, in my opinion. Fit in this. Made a crazy engine. Engine does not fit. All right. Engine bay is very full. Well, you know what? We could maybe make something happen with this. This isn't exactly the body style that I wanted to use, but I wanted something a lot more sporty than well, those older body styles. Not saying that the body styles are not good, it just doesn't work with what I'm trying to do here. Hmm. 
Maybe not quite that long. You want it to be somewhat long, it's sort of the style. There's be able to put all your equipment if you're going for a long drive, which typically what you're going to be using a UT car for so for very long drives. Be comfortable, and you also want to be going fast. Okay. Hmm. Something else in there, I'm thinking, maybe? A bit more of a fender flare on there so I can put bigger tires on. Have it stick out just a bit more. Well, it comes with a bumper, so I might as well use it. <laughs> That's the exhaust sticking out. Okay. So let's color. Well, we won't worry about coloring it yet. We'll just do that on the end. We just want to get the general shape of the car where I want it to be. We want it sloping down a bit. Getting pulled back, or do we slightly pulled back? I'm thinking. There we go. Not exactly what I originally had in mind, but I think it might work out. Alright, we're definitely rear drive, manual transmission, four speed. Game best this thing can go 165 miles an hour, and I, <laughs> I'm inclined to believe it. I push it a little bit further to give it a little bit of overdrive. I will right, leave that where it is now. Radial tires, we are definitely going to put a bigger compound on these suckers. The 200 or maybe a 95 possibly. We want bigger tires, we want. There we go. These are the biggest tires that this body style can handle. Alright. That might work. Put mag wheels on it. No. Let's keep it as is. All discs in the front, whack it up. Drums in the back, whack it up. No under tray. Gonna need a back seat. Sport interior with a luxury AM radio for those long, comfy, long, those long drives to make them comfortable. Power steering is a must. Advanced 60s technology with standard springs. Alright, so the game definitely says this is more of a muscle car. <laughs> wow, I made a quite the good muscle car. But GT is in the running there, which is good. Hmm. Okay, well, I might actually have to go back to the drawing board on this one. There, I think. Still it's yelling at me that we're gonna have issues with wheel spin. Hmm. Made a nice muscle car. It's, it's, the game is saying it's also be a great GT car, too. It's not very comfortable to drive. Zero to 60 in seven seconds. If you can get it to hook up, of course. Alright, there the game stops yelling, but it says we're gonna have wheel spin in both first and second gear. Ah, right. Front brake force is low compared to grip. Rear brake force is low compared to grip. Okay, so lots of <laughs> lots of issues going on here with this body style. I guess this particular body style was never meant to go this fast. Let's see, is there anything else here I could possibly do to help this car along? I think we could maybe do something else with the suspension here a little bit. See, this car is even a great touring car already. The low comfort penalty, but even with the low comfort penalty, I think the big thing that's killing comfort is suspension tuning is absolutely murdering it. Forty, and that making a really great GT car here. I mean, look at it go. 
13. Okay, we've passed the threshold there. 112. 114. 16. This thing's gonna be crazy. Very low max uh, weight capacity there, which is interesting. It is a bit of a more compact version. <laughs> I didn't really intend this to be, but this is actually quite entertaining for myself here. Uh, what the? We want that to be a. No, 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 no. Okay. And it's, the front, it's going to be screaming at me that the front end is too stiff. Three. Now it's a GT car. <laughs> Holy cow. This is quite incredible, actually. I didn't expect it to be quite this um, effective of a vehicle, but look at it. Here we are. <laughs> it's a GT followed by a muscle followed by sport. It's actually a perfect cross between what the uh, Studebaker and the... Uh, Aston Martin was because the Studebaker was more of a cross between a GT and a muscle and the Aston Martin was a cross between a GT and a sport while well, this thing just seems to be a, kind of a split between the two that really wasn't my intent but hey I <laughs> I think that surprisingly worked very very well all right well enough of that I think it's time for I think I got this. It's a little bit of understeer there, but I think that might actually work in our favor with how much power is going in through this thing. I mean, I could tweak it down probably a bit more and make it even crazier, but eh, I think we'll be okay. I think now, I think it's the time to work on this car a little bit and see of making it look the part. And after much faffing around, <laughs> I think I finally finally decided on a style that I like. It might be a little bit ahead of time. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. It looks more like a car from the 70s. But... I think it'll work. I think it'll work. Alright, so we just now have to name it. Of course, it's gonna be the MDM Industries. The Mountain Dragon Industries. Uh, let's see here. Let's say to me. Just because it's a bit of a contrary design, I think we're going to call the MDM Contrarian. Contrary. Super Sport. Oh, not Super Sport. GT. There we go. The Contrarian GT. Probably a little bit more could have gone on with the back here, eventually. Uh, 
Oh, we might sl put the badge on the back. That would be a good idea. Oh. I'm happy with it. And that engine? Well, probably should give it a name too. Okay, it's gonna be an MDM. It's gonna be the 5.0 liter naturally aspirated edition. Save that. Now I'll export over to BMNG and see how well, you know, me making something here on the fly, just completely on my own here to see what that what that sort of creation would stand up against the Studebaker Yes, Martin. All systems are a go.